Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to wrap up all of the books that I read in the month of February. I ended up reading nine books. The first three I actually don't have copies of because I listened to them on audiobook and they had such long wait lists that I couldn't get the physical copies in time. The first one is American Baby by Gabrielle Glazer. This is a book that looks into the dark history of adoption in America, specifically focusing on like the baby boom era in this time period when the social mores were changing of like what is the right way to raise a family and how to be a teenager. So all of these things were changing and were in flux and that caused a lot of unwed teenage mothers to be looked down upon and they even were like shipped away to hide their pregnancies and then basically got their babies taken away from them a lot of the times without their consent. And the flip side of that is all of these adoption agencies that were facilitating getting rid of these children from these unwed mothers weren't getting in contact with people who either could not have children or were facing infertility issues but did want children and were placing those babies with those families that couldn't have children. It's a really messed up conversation about like closed adoption, open adoption and what was acceptable and was not acceptable and what rights pregnant teenage mothers had in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And it talks about all of these subjects by focusing particularly on one story and that is of a young man named David. He always knew that he was adopted, he didn't look like his parents, and he always wanted to know more about his family. His mother and his father wanted to keep him. It's about his mother, Margaret, learning more about where it is that David ended up. Finally, when they are able to meet, it talks about like all of the wasted time that they weren't together and sometimes how biology and the things that you know about your family intrinsically, like the way that you act, the way that you walk, the way that you talk, sometimes that just comes from nature more so than nurture. Not to say that David didn't love his adopted parents or anything, but just that there was a something missing, especially considering that his parents didn't want to give him up. So it's about them reconnecting and all of the psychological and emotional trauma that dealing with this kind of situation had for both his mother, Margaret, his biological mother, and David. I thought that the conversations here about adoption and also about like what it was like to be a teenager in this time and what that meant with relationships that you're having and also like what kind of contraception was available and what kind of abortion rights were available at the time. I think make this a really interesting book. I think this book will work for a lot of people too because it is narrative in nature. I felt for David and Margaret and I wanted to know how the story resolved. If any of these topics sound interesting to you, definitely if you're into like social history and if you're into like more modern American history, I think it would be fascinating for you. It also taught me a lot about Jewish history. A lot of the people that we're following in this book are actually refugees resettled here after World War II and the Holocaust. So I thought that that was really interesting as well. Then the next book that I read after that was The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This has kind of been a hyped romance book coming out and that was kind of one of my things that I want to focus this year is to read more romance just to at least have one happy read or try to have at least one happy read per month that is a little bit more mindless I guess. But I will say that this book kind of disappointed me. I ended up giving it three stars which I did not expect considering what all everybody else was rating it on Goodreads. I think where I landed with this book is that I thought that it was completely unbelievable for two professional reporters slash ethical journalists to act in this manner. I couldn't suspend my disbelief of that and that really hampered my experience reading it. We're following two people who kind of have a hate hate relationship working at this public radio station together and the female main character has been working there for a really long time um, and is really good at her job and then the male main character that steps into the picture comes in with all these ideas about like news needs to be news and like having like fluffy pieces is not news. They basically are losing a bunch of money at the radio station and the boss there subjects them to think that it's a good idea to start this new radio station where they they act like they are exes. What I thought when I got into this book is that they were actually going to have been exes that then like met up after the fact and then this came as a result of that like you guys were exes but no they were literally lying about being exes and the entire conflict of the story is really that they've been lying this whole time about the beginning of this new radio show that they're doing because at the same time they're starting to like each other and starting to fall for each other why is this the conflict considering all of the other 
things that were happening and all of the kind of emotional baggage that they were bringing into the situation like they all had good background story that I think could have provided enough for the conflict for the story and I didn't understand why they had to lie about being exes. I will say I really did like I said enjoy all of the emotional baggage and you know problems and pasts that they brought into the relationship. I thought that they had really good chemistry. I liked their banter overall. I liked the audiobook experience overall. For me it was just the lie that was bothersome and it was so bothersome that it did bring it down to three stars for me. After that I read When You Trap a Tiger which was the Newberry winner for this year 2021 and I love this book. I think this was my favorite book that I read all month and it was towards the beginning of the month and then I just never recuperated after that. Nothing got to that level. When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller is a book that deals with storytelling, it's a book that deals with folk tales, Korean folk tales, and it's a book that deals with contemporary issues that middle grade girls are facing when it comes to family dynamics, when it comes to making friends, and when it comes to them feeling like they have their own voice. What I thought that this book was going to be about was leaning more towards the Korean folktale aspect of it. I'm not really a fan of retellings, I'm not really a fan of like folklore or mythology in general, and that's what I thought that this book was going to be about, so I had a little bit of a trepidation coming into it. But what I found is that this book use that to discuss and to deal with some of the themes and issues that the main character is dealing with. The main character Lily has to move to where her grandmother is living to take care of her grandmother because her grandmother is sick and she goes there with her mother and her sister. She has lost her father in an accident many years prior and it's about her not wanting to let her grandmother go. Her grandmother used to always tell the sisters stories so she focuses a lot on one story that her grandmother mother used to tell them very often. She starts kind of seeing a tiger. It's kind of this journey of her trying to return some stories that she shouldn't have or that her grandmother shouldn't have to try to save their grandmother. It's also her coming from the perspective of being what she calls quiet Asian girl with her sister tells her that she is like. Her shyness is um, something that defines her and something that she doesn't like that it defines her. So she's trying to grow and trying to become something more than just the stereotype that her sister and she believes about herself at the moment. It just delighted me. It was a really heartwarming read. It had all of these serious more grief and family dynamics and changing families topics that I really love in middle grade contemporary. But then it also had these little dashes of like folk tales and memories and talking about her grandmother's relationship with them that I also really really love. This book was just lovely. I gave it four and a half stars. I really love the audiobook experience as well. If you're not like a reader of mythology, folklore, fantasy in general, don't let that deter you because I feel like that was my main kind of thing that stopped me from reading this book faster or sooner and yeah I shouldn't have thought that it was about that. That's just one section of the book. And after that I read two graphic nonfiction. Um, I, I read these at work, don't tell anyone. And the first one was My Friend Dahmer by Durf Backdurf. Like I said I wanted to keep reading more Durf after loving Kent State for Dead in Ohio that I read in December and absolutely devoured and so I was trying to see if like his storytelling is for me and I think after reading this one what I'm understanding about how I see his works is that maybe over time he has gotten a lot better at his storytelling and like what stories need to be told. Reading My Friend Dahmer, I don't think that the story needed to be told. It was interesting in ways of like what it was like growing up in the 70s, what it was like growing up in these kind of like rust belt towns that are changing, and how parents talk to children in that time. Um, there were lots of different kinds of families. Also dealing with like substance abuse in this time, what was like permissible in school, what was allowed. Basically, Durf grew up with Jeffrey Dahmer, the serial killer. He was always kind of an outcast, and he was tangentially in their friend group, but not really. He was kind of more outside of it and sometimes would hang out with them or would see him or would pass him by in school. Things that Dahmer was dealing with in his home life were, were really deteriorating and disintegrating him. He was having these really dark thoughts and he couldn't talk to his family about it. And so Durf really focuses on what it would be like to be that kid who's having these thoughts but doesn't feel comfortable talking to his parents about it. So you just kind of hide that and you uh, self-soothe by drinking lots of alcohol. My main issues with this book, I gave it three stars. My main issues with it is that it just seemed to me like Durf and his friends were just there witnessing 
dancing and they were never active participants in maybe wanting to act i think Durf definitely understood that something was wrong it seemed like he just let that slide even though he was a kid then and i understand that i feel like he defends himself over and over in this book like living in the 70s was just like this and for me i'm just like was it really like that that you'd let so many of those things just slide the outbursts and the really uncomfortable situations that Dahmer was placing people in and was doing in front of people at times kind of like they were laughing at him laughing about him I didn't think that this needed to be told is, is what I'm getting at as a story I thought this was just okay and I would pass on it and then after that I read another one that I thought was just okay and that was Fever Year The Killer Flu of 1918 by Don Brown this looks into as you can tell, the Spanish flu in 1918. It looks at how it spread, what kinds of things people were doing to deal with the situation, what kinds of things politicians were doing, doctors were doing to learn more about it. Of course, this has a lot to say to me living in 2021 with the pandemic. So that's kind of why I wanted to pick it up. And also I love Don Brown and want to read all of his works. But I thought that this was just okay because it didn't have a central focus. I feel like it was too broad. The scope was too large because of that it just felt like we were just being told facts and information and that was just being dumped on us more so than it was like us understanding this from a perspective or a story at points he does focus on particular people or particular events i thought that this was just okay because it was so general after that i read a mystery i'm trying to read a couple mysteries in the first three months of the year and one that i read this month was a murder is announced by agatha christie Again, another one that I thought was just okay. I thought that this had a really satisfying conclusion. I love when they all sit around at the end and kind of put all of the pieces together and you understand like how everything happened. And I think Christy is great at lining all of that up and making the conclusion really satisfying where you're like, oh, that's how that happened. But overall, I think the issue that I have with Agatha Christie books in general is that she has too many characters for me to follow and I'm a person that really enjoys like a really small cast that we really dive deeply into. I read and then there were none and then I read this one now and they both have very large cast. On paper I think that that's fascinating. I like the idea of like a big cast in a small town and they all have like all of these predispositions and they all have these like mysterious like suspicious things happening about them but i think it's hard to follow for me i think my brain just doesn't process all of these people they all start becoming jumbled they all start feeling like each other i also thought that miss marple would be cooler i don't know i thought that she'd be more interesting i thought that she'd take more of a central focus in this book i felt like the detectives and like the police people were actually way more involved than she was as an investigator i don't know like she was there but just not as much as i thought that she would be considering the whole series is about her so i thought she'd be a more central figure i ended up giving that one three stars i read a lot by brian washington this is a short story collection and i thought this was pretty uneven i don't know if it's washington's writing style or his characters or um the fact that we keep coming to the same small family every story every other story that i didn't quite love there were definitely some stories that i really really enjoyed and i would think like by themselves i would rate four or five stars but as a collection all of them together this to me was a three star read my favorite stories were a leaf shepherd and bayou the most fascinating and like creative story is bayou which talks about like chupacabras and then trying to sell the story to, to the news. I thought that story was really really creative and imaginative. I also really like A Leaf because of the way that it talks about like how when you're in a small little apartment complex or like a barrio everybody knows everybody's business and I just loved the seeing like all of the characters uh, intermingling and like knowing about everyone's business. I thought that it was, that was very realistic and I also really enjoyed Shepherd, which talked about having a family member come over from an island I want to say it was Jamaica them dealing with some grief and also just discussing the differences between growing up in the states versus growing up on the island i will also say i listened to this on audiobook and brian washington narrates all of the stories that i said were all about the same family so like every other story it'd be that same family and we're learning a little bit more about them he narrated all of those so the narrators alternated and 
Washington's narration style is not for me. I actually didn't listen to any of his narrations and I would pause the book on audio and I would just read the story and then I'd come back to the next story. I think that Washington's narration style um, reminds me a little bit of Jason Reynolds narration style. It's like nothing to do with their writing. It has all to do with their voice and how they deliver their writing. They're a little bit stilted to me. They're a little bit monotone and they don't sound good on slow speed and they don't sound good on high speed either. I liked some stories a lot, but I didn't love all of the stories. That's the problem with short story collections, huh? Okay, two more, but guess what? I can't talk about the next one because the next one was Meltdown and this is by Carrie Arsenault. It was a booktube prize book that I had to read. You will hear more about it very, very soon. Let's just quickly mention the booktube prize because I'm still working my way through. I think I've decided that I'm not enjoying myself, not having anything to do with the books per se. I think it has more to do with the feeling that you have to read these books. <laughs> the fun part is that I'm reading things that I would never read so it's kind of like what do I feel about it? I'm not sure. Update, I'm halfway through Fevers, Feuds, and Diamonds. I have to put it back on hold on audiobook because the audiobook checkout that I had expired so I have to check it back out again. And then today I've been really focusing on Black Wave by Kim Gattas. I also had to recheck this one out on audiobook and I've been trying to focus more on this one. Finally, let's talk about the ninth book that I read in February. That one is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. I've been really looking forward to this and I was really excited to finally get to it. This was a breeze. Reading all of the booktube prize books, they're a little bit denser and I was just so bogged down, I feel like, that I had to read something different, something fast-paced. This did a fantastic job of that. Concrete Rose, if you don't know, is the precursor to The Hate You Give, so we're following Maverick Star's dad and seeing Seeing him as a single father um, to seven and then him being with Lisa and then finding out about being pregnant with Star. Also just like the general issues that Maverick dealt with in his teenage years when it comes to school, when it comes to losing friends and family, and when it comes to having a dad that is in prison. What I really really love about Angie Thomas is that she creates characters that I love reading about. I feel like the way that she writes her characters makes you really feel for them, you understand them. Like I say this every time that I read a book by hers, but it's just the truth. Her characters are completely full people. What I mean by that is that her characters usually are dealing with serious issues. They have lots of troubles in their life that they're trying to overcome but at the same time in all of these lives you see all of these light-hearted moments you see all of this humor that surrounds them you see in the way that their dynamics are with each other like how he talks to his family how he talks to lisa how he talks to his friends there's just these light moments of conversation between these characters that that's what i love the most about her books. I just feel like they really bond and in that way I feel like I really connect to them. Love this on audiobook as well. I would totally recommend it on audiobook. I think I might love Maverick more than I like Star. I don't know. If you have this on your TBR, I totally recommend it. I gave it four stars. I really loved my time with this one. And that is it for all of the books that I read in February. I hope that you enjoyed watching. Please let me know in the comments if you read any of these or if you would like to read any of these and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.